thank you for coming on a Sunday. Um, quick introduction about myself. I run a small Chinese joint venture e-commerce company out of Karachi. And previous to this, uh, I moved to Karachi in 2019, 2018, Bulgaria. Before that, I have uh, going back seven years with Walmart, global sourcing in China, four years with Royal Dutch Shell out of Singapore, 10 years with McDonald's Corporation, the burger chain out of Malaysia, their head office in the US, and then I started in Pakistan with Pakistan's country opening. And before that, five years with Alcatel, which is telecommunication. So I go across industry and I've worked in seven countries and now I'm here. So my talk is going to be about organizational behavior and managerial psychology. I hope you'll enjoy it. Just a quick show of hands. How many of you have bosses or you work in a company? Can you raise your hands? Okay. How many of you are entrepreneurs? Okay. Good. So the parables of Lord Fuqua. Fuqua is French. Uh, how many of you know French? Raise your hand. But uh, it is kind of pronounced Fuqua. And uh, parable just means a story where we can take an insight or an example. It's relevant to us. Please go to click the for next slide. Yes, sir. Enter. We're talking about uh, 17th century France. 17th century May Europe was a very messy place. So they were coming out of the Dark Ages and there was a lot of wars going on. But the most powerful king in Europe was Louis XIV. Louis XIV was the king of kings and he had immense wealth. Um, if you've been to France, the biggest and grandest palace is at Versailles, outside Paris. Versailles, mein, uh, Louis XIV ne apna banaya tha, and he was trying to exert power. The constantly jangye ho rahi thi. Uh, Germans ke against bhi jangye ho rahi thi. Holy Roman Empire ke khilaaf bhi, Brits ke khilaaf bhi. Uski court mein is bande ki kahani mein aapko batane lagao. Lord Fuqua jo tha. He uh, was born in nobility. अच्छे खानदान का बंदा था और उस जमाने में यही होता था कि 10 12 बच्चे पैदा करते थे ज्यादातर वो क्लर्जी की तरफ चले जाते थे यानी दीन में और दो तीन लोग अप्रेंटिस बन जाते थे तो ही ही हैड 12 सिब्लिंग्स उनमें से 6 नन्स बन गए चार एबट्स बन गए ये जो था इसने लॉ डिग्री की इसने लॉ डिग्री की और इसका था कि मैं थोड़ा सा ये जो दो थे ये बाकी को भी पालते थे तो ये एक उनका था और ये एसोसिएट भी रहा एक बंदा था जिसका नाम माजरा है वो एक एसोसिएट था या चीफ मिनिस्टर था लुई द 14th का उसका ये एक राइट हैंड मैन भी रहा और उस वक्त भी लाइक इन मेनी किंगडम्स फूड शॉर्टेजेस होते थे और राइटिंग होती थी रेबेलियंस होते थे तो माजरा जो था बड़ा अच्छा था उनको क्वेल करने के लिए 10 12 लोग यू नो मार दिए किसी गांव को दबा दिया तो इन चीजों में भी ये बड़े एक्सपर्टीज रखते थे एंड इवेंचुअली जो मजना था जो इसका माई बाप था जो चीफ मिनिस्टर था वो एग्जाइल हो गया क्योंकि एक रिबेलियन को वो सप्रेस नहीं कर सका एंड सो जो फुकुआ है वो सुपरिंटेंडेंट फ्रांस बन गया अच्छा एक इंटरेस्टिंग बात ये है कि उस जमाने में लुई द 14th जो एम्पायर और किंग था वो इन ऑर्डर हैव दीस पोजीशंस ऑफ पावर यू हैव टू बाय देम it wasn't a system like today. So you actually have to buy the position. So only the nobility and rich people could actually buy the main positions around the king. So the king actually amassed wealth. And if you go to the palace in Versailles, all of these nobles had to live in the palace. They had to live in the palace because that ensured that there rebellion now. And then Louis XIV used to 
you know, give them a lot of food and lavish and wealth. Or usse wo aur ho jate the. I mean, they were became numb to the society around them. You know, you can see that in the world today as well to some extent. Power is actually bought. So that's the background. Uh, hold your questions till the last, and then uh, we can take them at the end. Let's come to Louis the Fourteenth. So. There was a god, and then there was Louis the Fourteenth. He was the grandest of kings in Europe then, and this is the time period. यहाँ the land of Shah Jahan था. The emperor was Shah Jahan. He was building the Taj Mahal and all that with Turkish architects, and he was also great. But in Europe, Louis the Fourteenth was the child king initially, roughly around 1643 to 1715, 1780 years. Uh, France was at its mightiest. Absolute monarchy, and to question anything from Louis the Fourteenth would have meant traitorship and death. Okay. Just want to give you a feel of Versailles. Uh, I've been several times. It is absolutely stunning, and this uh, in the auditorium be a theater be a. There's huge gardens. There's chateaus. There's fountains. It's it's very well done. Golden halls and chandeliers. And you can imagine how the king behaved with his noblemen over there. So that was the superpower of its time. Actually, it's a little bit organ because it's an organizational behavior class. This is their org structure. So Louis the Fourteenth controlled the country through four different methods. एक मिनिस्टर ऑफ मैरिटाइम होता था और उसके पीछे नोबल्स होते थे मिनिस्टर ऑफ मरीन और मैरिटाइम यूज टू बी ओवरसीज अफेयर्स देयर बिकॉज़ वो मरीन से ही जाते थे एयरक्राफ्ट से तो जा ही नहीं सकते थे सुबह इफ यू हर्ड ऑफ लुइजियाना दैट वाज अ फ्रेंच कॉलोनी इट वाज अंडर लुई द 14 सो दैट्स वेयर दैट कम्स फ्रॉम अच्छा उसके अलावा बिशप बहुत जरूरी था बिशप वाज बेसिकली व्हाटएवर लुई द 14 डिड he was representing god on earth so bishop basically ordained it so jo bhi usne kaam karana hota tha wo bishop ko kehta tha bishop bishop fatwa laga deta tha aur wo sab kehte the acha ye to khuda ki taraf se so kind of we see that now right so hum kisi time warp pe hain pakistan mein 300 saal but it was happening then then the governors for each province used to control the country and then intendant my means the finances And all the money and the accounting. So Lord Fuqua was a bright guy. He had a law degree. He and in 20 years, he was the Mazharaj, who was the Chief Minister, who was the Mai Bap. He said that uh, we've heard there's some embezzlement in a province. Why don't you audit the accounts? At 20, he audited the accounts. 20, he audited the accounts, and they gave him a lot of money, and he, you know, became his favorite person. And he also told the king, "Kya?" Lord Fuqua, you know that family. They knew each other. He did a really good job, and that guy was swindling money from you. So that's his organization structure. And I'm sure all of you, because you're all mostly working, you have organization structures for formal hierarchy. Me. So yeah, it's a painting because they didn't have pictures then of Lord Mazara. Front means just a riot because. Uh, if they didn't have bread, the riot would have been. If they didn't have other stuff, riot would have been. So he was he was really good at quelling riots. The Jami riot would have been used to crush them until the end. He got exiled because he couldn't crush a riot. Just to give you an idea of uh, mainland Europe. So Louis the Fourteenth was fighting all these battles across the German Empire and was sending ships to England. Where Jacobite rebellion was happening. वो रिबेलियन को सपोर्ट कर रहे थे एंड ही वाज फाइटिंग ऑल दिस वॉर्स एंड बिल्डिंग दिस पैलेसेस सो मच सो दैट ही स्टार्टेड टू रन इन ट्रबल विद हिज फाइनेंस मिनिस्ट्री बिकॉज़ द किंगडम डिडंट हैव इनफ मनी सो टू फाइट अ वॉर यू नीड मनी एंड यू नीड एन इकॉनमी एंड दे डिडंट दे हैड अ स्ट्रांग इकॉनमी इट वाजंट दैट स्ट्रांग टू बिल्ड पैलेसेस एट द सेम टाइम सो द कंट्री स्टार्टेड बिकमिंग इन डेट इन डेट में जाना शुरू हो गई 
सो इतनी देर में लॉर्ड मजरा वो सेंट इन टू एक्साइल बिकॉज ही कुंट क्वेल अ रेबेलियन सो कुंट क्वेल अ रेबेलियन एंड फुकवा बिकेम द चीफ मिनिस्टर एंड फुकवा बींग He was very sharp with IQ, and he was very, very good at what he did in accounting and finance. He convinced Louis XIV that I'll handle the finances under my family's name because he belonged to nobility; they had money. So he said that I'll go to England, I'll go to Germany, I'll get them to have a ceasefire, and I'll borrow money from the Holy Roman Empire or wherever, and I'll settle the kingdom, which he was able to do. So Spain, Louis XIV, all to show him. खुदा तो ऊपर है मत नीचे लुई दिन खुश हुए उनका बच्चे तुमने कमाल कर दी है और जनाब उसकी बाबा हुई तो ही लॉर्ड फुकवा बिकेम नंबर टू और नंबर थ्री इन द किंगडम नाउ यू कैन इमेजिन विद ऑल द पॉम्प एंड ग्लोरी व्हाट वाज गोइंग ऑन सो लॉर्ड फुकवा ने सोचा कि आई एम रियली गुड एट दिस सो आई डिजर्व समथिंग बिकॉज यू नो वी ऑल गेट प्रमोटेड समटाइम्स इन आर लाइफ and we feel that you know, we deserve a treat let me we deserve a treat so why don't i build a small chateau for myself and so lord fukua built a chateau it was like a mini versailles it's not a palace but it's quite grand as you can see and uh, there weren't really mechanized pumps then but he had mechanized pumps from the suleiman the magnificent and All of these people were known to him. उसने कहा कि मैकेनाइज पंप्स ले आए पानी की धार ज्यादा ऊंची जाएगी एंड देन ही थ्रू अ पार्टी एज वेल ही हैड फ्रेंड्स इन द फार ईस्ट एंड दे हैड बिल्ड फायर वर्कस एंड द चाइनीज के टेक्नीशियन आए उन्होंने फायर वर्कस भी कर दिए सो ही वॉज डूइंग वेल एंड लुई द फोर्टीन सेड कि यार बच्चे तुमने तो कमाल कर दिए मतलब आपने कंट्री को डेक से भी निकाल दिया यू नो वॉट यूर डूइंग विल बिकम इवन बिगर पावर मरीन को उन्होंने कहा कि और जाके कलोनियल पावर्स करो जहां जहां जंगली रह रहे हैं उस जमाने में फ्लैग और कोट ऑफ आर्म्स बड़े एक चीज होती थी कि हर फैमिली किंगडम का कोट ऑफ आर्म्स या फ्लैग होता था तो फुकवा का ये कोट ऑफ आर्म्स है द स्कूरल और उनकी मोटो थी वॉट हाइट्स विल ही नॉट स्केल वाहर इज नो लिमिट टू माई सक्सेस एंड इन इन लोकल डायलेक्ट इन फ्रांस फुकवा एक्चुअली मीन स्क्र सो इट सूटेड इन काइंड ऑफ नाइस राइट वन यू थिंक क्यूट फुकवा थ्रू अ पार्टी एंड ही इन्वाइटेड लुई द फोर्टीन एंड यू कैन रीड वॉट हैपन बट बेसिकली लुई द फोर्टीन वॉज ट्वेंटी टू दैन and louis the 14th felt that his authority had been kind of eroded and uh, he didn't know jab ye fireworks chal rahe the aur ye you know fountains or in thing there was opera going on louis the 14th asked for him to be arrested the second third most powerful man in france to be arrested and lord fukua didn't know what hit him he had absolutely no clue because he was very low in eq he could not understand what was going on in that organization well the, these are actually quotes from history the king was astounded by the display of luxury the king himself jo paida hi as a child king hua tha um so even then if you look at the last bullet it's important to see they did still have a kangaroo court law tha wahan pe bhi you could just kill anybody so lord fukua ko they kind of enticed him to give over 1 million liras to to state to give up some you know to make him bankrupt basically so they stripped him of power they took away all of his money this is the informal organization structure louis the 14th ki so formal organization structure to pata hi tha lord mazara the king was up there louis the 14th powerful right the queen to hoti thi do ta concubines bhi hoti thi na us zamane mein so the consorts 1 and 2 were his consorts king ki 
So, Chemi Nebele, Lord Fukuane, was also sleeping with one of the consorts. And he had tried to bribe her and say, Ke yaar, paise mujhe le lo. Mujhe batate rena what Louis XIV tells you in bed. She went and told him, Lord Mazara to exile me chala gaya tha. Acha, jo maritime affair ke banda tha, usne bhi kaan bhanne shuru kar diye, Louis XIV ke. It all became a nexus against Fukua. Kya hi apne aapko samajhta kya hai? Ye to sir aapki job ke biche hai. There is going to be a revolution and they will overthrow you. And by the way, the French Revolution wasn't after over a hundred years after Louis XIV. So it has nothing to do with him. Jo aap meri internet ka padte hai na ke let them eat bread. Wo iske ke satar asi saal baad ho de. Is wakat koi aisa nahi thai. Chote mote rebellions ho de te. What you should be wary of is the informal structure within the organization. And there are informal structures. I gave you my introduction. There are informal structures everywhere and they're very deep. Be aware of them and use them to your advantage. So you can actually use the use the informal structure to your advantage by planting stuff. Anyways. <clears throat> So anyway, he got imprisoned and Lord Fukua was uh, for treason. You Obviously, you go to the guillotine and get your head chopped off. But then he didn't commit treason in that. He was still loyal to the king. It's just that the king felt threatened. They actually had him banished at this fort. And they had banished and they put an iron mask on him. They put an iron mask on him, Lord Fukua. And they had some trumped up cases against him as well for financial embezzlement. And he spent 19 years and he died in prison. So the, one of the most powerful men in France goes from that to nothing and dies in prison. Um, there are learnings for me and hopefully for you in this. We don't want to die in prison, right? You want to succeed, you're all, mashallah, executive MBA students, all set to go to great heights in life. Don't commit what Lord Fukua did. So learnings, uh, just quickly, and then I can take questions. <clears throat> Loyalty to the boss is sacrosanct. In any company I've worked with, and I've told you about, you know, 25 years with Alcatel, McDonald's, Shell, Walmart, now Chinese joint venture. To go to your boss's boss and say your boss is an idiot means going to him and saying you're an idiot because he chose it. If you have a boss who's a psychopath and there's many psychopaths out there, the best thing is to find a job and leave and put on a show until you do that. The worst thing to do is go to HR. Because the role of HR is actually to make you feel that they're on your side, but they're not. They're on the company's side. So loyalty to the boss is sacrosanct in any organization, irrespective of time. Lord Fukua ki to 300 years ago, he told And the reason is, it's called hierarchy, ownership and authority. The companies are there to create shareholder value, profitability. If everybody starts an uprising against the boss, then the whole system crumbles. And this goes back to the re rebellions that were happening in France. Against the game. Careful on the words you choose to communicate. So, communication by written, verbal, or even body language cues says a lot. So for example, I can tell what energy level there is in the room by looking at you. You don't have to say anything. Right? So when you walk out, you can look from the window and tell which one's a bandak is frame of mind. For example, Choti Chi Chi is up in lunch make at the co-worker cooking. Yeah, maybe boss could which are they? Yeah, maybe boss the power of the other. This will be used against you. 
you will be known for your weakest moment. Don't ever, ever let your guard down. Any company. I will give Walmart an example. Deta. Walmart is the biggest retailer on earth. We have a very, very stringent policy of non-alcohol beverages at work. After work, we have a lot of associates who are very good at he is really good and he used to get exceed expectations every year. Ek raat hama shenjen mein chale ge, he got drunk. He took off his top and jumped into the pool. He got laid off, but he was known after that as the guy who got drunk and jumped into the pool. Not as the guy who got the exceed expectations. So don't ever get let your guard down, especially with regarding the hierarchy and putting your company down. Because the hierarchy actually controls the company and the brand. So when you say that this company is a big value, yeah, this is negativity, it's seen as you're pointing fingers to the top. Yeah, Be aware of non-formal networks. I've shown you what the organization is and what it really is. Who's sleeping with who in metaphorical terms is still happening. You don't know who's doing that. आप नई कंपनी में जाके सबसे पहला काम कर सकते हैं कि अपनी नोटबुक पे ग्रेट पॉइंट बनाए हु इज टॉकिंग टू हु किसके कौन दोस्त यार है एंड जस्ट यू जस्ट बी केयरफुल व्हाट यू से टू दैट मैं कंपनी के साथ था एंड आई वाज एन एग्जीक्यूटिव वाइस प्रेसिडेंट एंड आफ्टर यू नो 2 मंथ्स इनटू दैट रोल ही टुक मी आउट फॉर लंच एंड ही आस्क्ड मी ही इज माय फ्रेंड नाउ बाय द वे ही स्टिल ऑन लाइक दैट ही आस्क्ड मी व्हाट डू यू थिंक अबाउट आवर कंपनी he said, can I be honest? He said, yeah. Smile, Vicky. Said, yeah, tell me. I said, well, getting promoted here is like winning the lottery. I never got promoted in that company. I never did. That was an insult to him. There you go. Performance and merit, hard work, Lord Fuqua style, will save your job probably in this day and age. You will not get banished. We are in iron mass, but you will not get wrong. Because after EQ is not low, you cannot handle people. Leadership is about just one thing. Are people willing to follow you? That's what a leader is. Whether it's a spiritual leader, a political leader, business leader, or do you have enough people to follow you? And if you don't, it won't get you promoted. Yeah, and this is a uh, Hard work to both cut the labor we cut the hard work. Both Zada cut the physical hard work. Mainat lo both Zada cut the intellectually. But you need to cultivate trust and EQ and know your surroundings. Otherwise, it's done. Chica? That's my talk for today. I hope you learned something about Lord Fuqua. And I can take any questions you want now. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Yeah. So if you were Lord once the No, it's game over because he will never know who said who to what. He will never know this. So this is all amb op ambiguous and you're operating in gray areas. Or is a business can embrace ambiguity and vagueness. Because there is no set rule. Many MBA kiata many learn here there is no template for a business case. And there's no template for success. He wouldn't he would he would never know this. And this is just one of the follies. Other things is just going to, you know, different countries and raising capital and, and, and them asking, okay, why do you have such a great king? He's almost God. Why do you need money? And telling them that, you know, we're actually out of money. We're actually bankrupt. You don't do that. So well, there are several things that were leading up to it. Or uh, history may Mazaran to exile Logyata, there was another cardinal who's the head of Marine. A general who went against him 
and all of these people testified in court ki yaar usne ye kaha usne ye kaha but it was too late in the it what in the end the destruction you do in a leader's mind usko overcome karne ke liye trust gain karne ke liye you'll have to spend much more effort it's almost impossible once you've lost it so he had lost his trust aur usne aur king ke paas waqt hi nahi hai if he's in his mid 30s usne kaha okay isko sideline karo yaar put the iron mask on him and No, but you'll never know that either. So you will not know what was held against you, and you will not know when you've lost the trust. You can guess that if you're doing everything well and you're working hard and you're not getting promoted, it could be that. But they'll never tell you. And if uh, it, I mean, in global organizations which I've worked for, their job is actually to be nice to people. The higher the leader, the less they know anyway. So their job is to make people happy and productive, right? So they won't tell you because that could be disruptive. It's not a black and white. So why do stuff that could endanger your career? Adatun se nahi chalega. Ya adat thi ji maine ye keh diya. Fatal error. Ji sir. I have a question. Hmm. So uh, you said that you know the leader is the best teacher. emotional quotient is basically understanding other people's thinking and emotions and using them to your advantage right i think you can use various tools acha i have never been to iba by the way this was my first trip i'm glad i came it looks like a really nice institution great infrastructure i'm sure you are here you go and look at tools like the johari's window इसको गूगल करें जोहारीज विंडो में जो जे ओ एच ए आर आई जोहारीज विंडो इट बेसिकली गिव यू अपरसेप्चुअल मैप ऑफ वट यू थिंक अबाउट योर सेल्फ एंड वॉट अदर पीपल थिंक अबाउट यू सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल फॉर कान सेटिंग हेयर आई कैन सी ही इज वेरिंग अ टर्क वॉइस टी शर्ट एंड ही कैन सी दैट ये एक विंडो पेन है बट आई कान टेल वेदर ही इज टेकिन अ शावर इन द मॉर्निंग ओनली ही नोज दैट so there's tools like berkman who actually quantify your emotional quotient as well aap apna emotional quotient dekhe aur uh us pe home in kare because it's all about that and in, in in formal education even in these institutions what they teach is actually the easy skills or soft skills or theory the hard skill is how to leverage people and that's what they don't teach and it's a real pity and that's why i was telling to your professor in the end these organizations all about people it this is the most important critical area and i have four modules actually this was the first wo char agar aap seekh jaye aapko samajh aa jayegi yaar har organization mein khel kya hai ye aapne levers press kar diye and i'm not saying by any means any means don't work hard if you don't work hard and you know you don't have the right iq what fir aap obviously you know you can't have the head of our organization is a dumbass right उसकी बात मैं नहीं कर रहा आई एम सेइंग कि वो तो एक विधिमन है ही उसके बाद अ पर्सन जो डेड होशियार है और वो फाइव वर्क फ्रांस से ला रहा है उसने पैलेस छोटा सा बना दिया है द किंग इज ओनली थर्टी ऑफ कोर्स इज गोना एंड अप विद वर्सेस इफ ही हैड स्टेड लो कैप्ट ऑन वर्किंग हार्ड ही वुड हैव बीन स्टिल देयर फॉर द रेस्ट ऑफ हिज वन लाइफ राइट सो या आई मीन यू कैन यू हैव अ लॉट ऑफ टूल्स एट योर डिस्पोजल आई एम श्योर यू कैन आस्क द प्रोफेसर वेलकम टू राइट टू मी Whatever I can help, but yeah. So you have worked in seven different countries. So coming back to Pakistan, uh, did you encounter any reverse cultural shock? Uh, you know, in terms of uh, you know values, workforce values, uh, international culture, or something? Yeah. So 
So I came back to Pakistan because uh, I'm, I've been in retail all my life. Pakistan is the largest growth retail market in the world. It's underserved by by many quantums. So man, you know, after my corporate career of what 22 years, I said, yeah, uh, if they can do it, I can too. Maybe I can't, maybe I can. So I jumped into a joint venture with the Chinese and came back. Retail physical is growing at 8 to 10%. E-commerce is growing doubling every year. So if you have a good product and you put it online and you know how to drive sales, it'll do really well. Um, yeah, so uh, when you say okay, values, or oh, I, I don't understand like what? Behavioral aspect of workers, you know, having, having uh, work abroad with all these big names. Yeah, so, in, uh, yeah. so with regards to leadership up here. Leadership and there's various styles of leadership. There's not one. So you have like 20 people seated, sitting here. You could be different types of leaders and depending on the society. So when I was in China, the values are hierarchical. So boss ne jo diye, it gets transmitted down and nobody will ask you anything. Nobody will push back. So you have to ward against that and make sure that leader mistake. Leader ko khud karna chahi, ki yaar, koi mistake to nahi karna. So koi engineering drawing galat agar main bhej do niche, wohi replicate ho jayegi. Nobody's going to say no. That's how they're built. In the US, they'll push back. Unless it makes logical sense or it adds value, they're not going to do it. And we are kind of in the middle. I think we'll still ask questions. So leadership styles, maybe. We're a mix between East and West. But otherwise, I don't think anything's wrong. The market is huge. I mean, we can really, I mean, for an entrepreneur, if he does it well, you can make a lot of money here. And in fact, uh, I do town halls for younger generation, like people coming out of O levels. And I'm saying to them in the future, start now. This is not a market where you can beat inflation with work. Do your own thing. Do your own thing. Get help from somewhere. And uh, a lot of a lot of kids ask me, we don't have the money. You don't need money to do entrepreneurship. You need an idea. Right? So, Baki, uh, Industrial Revolution, and IT Louis XIV, right? So, Pakistan is a progress on that. We're part of the world. There's more things common than things that are about. So, so, can I please ask one question? We can be slightly deviate from this current topic if you allow me. If I know, I'm sure. Yes, sir. Just like you have mentioned about the entrepreneurship. So I have studied your profile and you are a successful entrepreneur, mashallah. So sir, for the young generation like us, what would you suggest, what should be the key points if we want to start up a business within Pakistan or in any other foreign country? What should be the key points or the, your suggestion as for your experience? Is it okay? Uh, firstly, I'm not, I don't think I'm a successful entrepreneur. Thank you for saying that. I think I was more successful in corporate. And I have a couple of people from ESY here. We try our best. We have a good culture. I think, um, okay, for this market, you need demand. So the key thing I would watch out for if there's a learning is make sure there is a demand for your product. You, if you don't have a demand for your product, you're making something that you're passionate about and it won't do well, right? So make sure there's a demand for a product and make sure when you do the PNL and the NPV analysis, make sure that you have enough cash flow to sustain your business, you know, in thick and thin. Otherwise, you know, you can tell by a few things, yeah, will this fly or not? Abhi shuru your market. So, um, if you're in services, like I say, uh, with 200 plus million people, geographically, well endowed, well you know located is Pakistan. You can't go wrong. Up, prahana shuru kare, mint kar sakte hain waise. Up, pharmacies khole lo, bimar honge. Khana ki pi denge chizey hain, wo khana to khayenge, kapde to pehnenge. You can't. I mean, so you just have to be good at it. You can't wing it. So they got an interview. Main kar lete hain try or then hopefully succeed. Or they don't wing it. Try to do something that has demand. Is that kind of answer? That's a good question. 
लीडरशिप में क्या डिफरेंस था आई थिंक इन द कंपनीज आई वर्क विद आई वॉज पेड टू प्रोवाइड लीडरशिप सो इ रिस्पेक्टिव ऑफ द सर्कमस्टांस यू गेट अ पे चेक एट दी एंड एंड यूर पेड टू बी happy and you know you take your people along with you so they listen to what the company wants to do and in the end if something blows up it, there are so many departments who can help you you know hr can help you finance can help you legal can help you just in an entrepreneur you are everything so you just pull up your sleeves and you're the finance guy you're the hr guy if any shit it's the fan it's you so you have to be self happy so leadership is not something that you can do be unhappy and be sustainable so what are the things professor that you ask what i do notice is the level of leadership is very low in the country so wo aapne aksar suna hoga setia mentality so setia mentality they'll never be able to go regional or global with this mentality that's done they'll have to take the organization with them and oh jo companies ki next layer uh, who educate kar rahe and they're understanding how to do it they're expanding सो वो सेटी मेंटेलिटी कम होती जाएगी क्योंकि अमेरिका में है ही नहीं है बहुत छोटी कंपनीज में है सो यू हैव टू डिजोल्व पावर डाउन और आप सेंट्रलाइज ना करें सेट तो सेंट्रलाइज करता है ना उसके बगैर हो गए नहीं कुछ लुई दा बना हुआ है जी नोबल्स को भी बुला लिया पैलेस में उनको कहा आप मिल भी नहीं सकते उनको खिलाया पिलाया खुश है सारे तो वो बिल्कुल नम हो जाते हैं तो आप जो है यू हैव टू डिवॉल्व पावर डी सेंट्रलाइज कर दें एंड देन दैट्स द बेस्ट वे Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.